I'm here to talk about what everybody hates. Don't hate me. Don't hate me. Everybody hates traffic. The noise, the pollution, the wasted time, the frustration. Recent studies have shown about 4.2 billion hours a year are wasted every year here in the United States due to sitting in congested traffic. Now, why can't we solve it? We can send a man to the moon, we can cure cancer, we can watch TV on our cell phones, but we can't seem to solve traffic problems. So that's what I do for a living, and what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today. So, in order to understand traffic, we have to start with the fundamental idea of driving. And driving is a selfish activity. When I'm driving, I'm looking at all you people, and I'm saying, they're in my way. <laughs> you are congestion. You look at me, and you say, I'm congestion. So we're all part of congestion. The other thing is, is we think that roads are just built for us. And again, people are in our way. I got to get to where I'm going. These people are in my way. They're slowing me down. Well, what happens is when we try to make improvements in traffic flow, we're not looking at me or you or the people in the balcony. For sure not the people in the balcony. <laughs> what we're trying to do is we're trying to make incremental changes to the system, and hopefully that that combined effect has a lot of, does a lot of good. So, why do we have traffic jams to begin with? Well, fundamentally, it's supply and demand. Supply is basically the road capacity, how much, how much car carrying ability or capability we have on our road system. The, de the demand is basically all of us wanting to use that capacity. So when all of us overwhelm the capacity, we get congestion. Now, the technical term in research that we use to describe it is called three pounds of cars in a two-pound bag. So, why can't, we, why can't we solve them? There is no easy answers. If there was an easy answer, I wouldn't be up here giving a TED talk on this topic. But one of the other problems is, is that when we do make any kind of improvement, it also comes with kind of adverse conditions. And I'll get to an example of that in a second. But um, one of the other problems is, is that when we take away, or excuse me, when we give something to me for a benefit, let's say we're at a traffic signal, and I get more green time, that means we've got to take it away from the cross street traffic. The, the adage in traffic engineering is that traffic engineers don't solve problems, we just move them to different locations. And that happens a lot. The other thing is, is that each solution brings more problems. So, what we find ourselves doing in traffic engineering is chasing our tail, because when we make an improvement, what happens? More people want to come and use that, because we've increased speeds, we've cut down travel time, so more people want to come, and we end up in the same situation that we were to begin with. That's a problem. The other problem is that these solutions, solutions all cost money. They don't come for free, and no one wants to raise their taxes necessarily to solve road problems, especially if they don't see a direct benefit. But probably one of the biggest things is, is there's very little incentive to innovate. And there's very little incentive because of how we all think about improvements. Again, I said that as traffic engineers, we're trying to make incremental improvement. To us, a three or a four or a five percent improvement is pretty good. But in a half hour commute, what is that, 30 seconds? 45 seconds, a minute, you don't even know when you're getting an improvement. So let me show you, or give you, let me show you a good example of that. The Baton Rouge ramp metering system. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Who thinks that stoplights on a freeway ramp are a good idea? Yeah, I didn't think so. All right, so <laughs> pretty much no one does. But what if I told you that these have been measured to have a decrease of nearly 20% in travel time? What you don't see is that five minutes, that four minutes that you're gaining on your way to the office, because if you're waiting to get on that ramp, it's backing up traffic. Again, we're not looking for you, we're looking for the entire system. So now that three or four or five minutes multiplied by 10,000 or 20,000 vehicles during the morning peak hour, it's not just hours or days, it's actually months of delay savings time. So call the DOT and tell them they're doing a good job. 
Um, so what, is, what, is traffic, what does traffic jams look like? Well, here's an example of a bad... Hopefully your traffic jam doesn't look like this one. Um, that actually was from Houston, Texas during the evacuation for Hurricane Rita. But to us, in research, traffic jams look something like this. Lots of equations and numbers. We use that to fail students all the time. <laughs> Some of my students are here. I love you guys. You guys are great. <laughs> you know you got an A. All right, or, or, or we, we look at it graphically, we do stuff like this. But what this allows us to do is it allows us to build simulation models, and what we do is we study how traffic jams form, how long they last, how far back they go. So there's really people who do this for a living. I think about it, it keeps me up at night. So let me show you a quick example of what one of these traffic jams look like. It's a situation that you probably encounter all the time and wonder, you, well, you probably just think you're in traffic, but there's a little bit of rhyme and reason to this, and I'll show you. Okay, now watch that blue truck right there. He's going to do something that everybody does. He's going to change lanes. Now, when he changes lanes, that causes his blue car to stop, which causes the black car to stop, and the red car, and the white car, and so on, and so on, and so on. And while that's playing, you're going to see that it doesn't just slow down, but at some point, vehicles actually have to come to a stop. That's what we call a traffic shock wave. And these shock waves are moving past us and forward and backward all the time. But this will also back up traffic, especially if it's really, really heavy, not just for maybe just this little immediate area, not just a quarter mile, but these traffic jams can go three, four, five, six, sometimes 10 miles away, and they can do it within just a matter of a few minutes or a few seconds. And when you stop, you're not just stopping like this, you're actually stopping for a minute or two, or sometimes three or four or five minutes, and then the traffic starts moving again, and you don't even know why you were stopped and why you continue. You think there's a, a crash or construction, but that's not what it is. So, is it hopeless? Uh, sort of. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose we could outlaw driving and put people under arrest when they're in their car to try to diminish demand. But no, there is some hope. And this is what we're working on through our research. It's the future of highway technology. One of the things are what we call auto, autonomous con vehicle control systems. These are things like cruise control and active cruise control. You probably have it in your car right now. Um, automatic braking, automatic steering that keeps you in your lane, even if you've had a few too many Diet Cokes maybe on the way home. Um, cars that park themselves. All right, those are being, a lot of these things are being developed by the car companies. The other is what we call connected vehicle technology. What connected vehicle technology is, is communication technology that goes between vehicles. So your vehicle talks to the vehicle next to you and the vehicle behind you, the vehicle in front of you, and so on and so on and so on. So when these two technologies are married together, when that blue truck changes lanes, what he does is that message is sent to the vehicle behind him, so the, the, that vehicle just starts braking without delay, and the vehicle behind them, and the vehicle behind them, and the vehicle behind them. The idea is, is that Everybody doesn't have to come to a stop, but everybody has to slow just a little bit. So again, that incremental savings is not just 3 or 4% or 20% like the ramp meters, but this kind of technology can give us improvements of 50 and 60 and 70%. So we can push a lot more traffic through with a lot less delay. So our goal is to try as hard as we can to reduce that 4.2 billion hours of delay each year, and give that back to you. What you got to do is figure out how you want to use that time to do good things. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>